On June 29th, 2010, Tesla launched its IPO on the NASDAQ exchange. The company raised $226 million in its initial public offering, being the first American automaker to go public since Ford over 50 years earlier in 1956. Tesla priced its shares above the initial price range of $14 to $16. Tesla shares closed at $23.89 after opening at $17, an impressive gain despite the Nasdaq and Dow falling by a couple percent each. The company quickly boosted the number of shares by 2.2 million to 13.3 million due to high demand. Tesla had burned through more than $300 million since its founding in 2003. A lot of people were puzzled about why we were going public without profits, Musk told reporters outside the Nasdaq building. But when would you say you, you, you could reassure investors that you'll turn a profit? You've lost $290 million since the company started in 2003. You've yet to turn a profit. When yeah. do you expect that to happen? No, that, that's a good question. I think people uh, just uh, need to appreciate that if we were just making the Roadster and doing powertrain business, we'd be profitable as a company. Um, but we're in a massive expansion mode. With the, with the Model S, we're increasing our volume by 30 to 40 fold. Um, so it's just impossible to, for as a company as a whole to remain profitable given that level of growth. Despite big investments from Daimler and Toyota, which planned to buy $50 million worth of stock at the time, Musk told Bloomberg, our goal is to remain independent. Being acquired by a big player isn't out of the question, he said, but just not something we're aiming for. Based on the response we got going, going through the roadshow, uh, we had just an incredible, incredibly positive uh, uh, outcome from, I think, the smartest investors in the world. Um, and if you look at our offering, it's not just uh, you know, price above the range, it's not just expanded 20%, but if, if, when people look at the list of investors uh, that, that are part of this IPO, they'll be amazed at the quality um, and strength of, of the investor group in Tesla. People at this point uh, ought to be a little bit more optimistic about the future of Tesla because we've confounded the critics at every turn. Um, so at a certain point, people have to get, get tired of being wrong. And you believe you've got to prove them wrong. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla, on a big day here at NASDAQ. Tesla now trading publicly, listing at $17 a share. Guys, back to you. With the success of the Roadster and necessary capital from the public offering, Tesla was ready for its moment as a company. Tesla had originally planned for an assembly factory in New Mexico, and construction was set to begin in April of 2007, but got canceled. A Greenfield factory was set to be built in San Jose, California, but the cost was prohibitive. Tesla started looking for alternatives. Initially, Tesla had dismissed NUMI, also known as the New United Motor Manufacturing Incorporated, a joint venture between General Motors and Toyota, because of its size and cost. NUMI yearly production peaked at 428,633 vehicles in 2006. On May 20th, 2010, Tesla and Toyota announced a partnership to work on electric vehicle development and collaborate on the development of electric vehicles, parts, and production system and engineering support. This included, in a lucky turn of events, Tesla's purchase of the Numi factory building for $42 million. Tesla officially took possession of the site on October 19th and opened it on October 27th of 2010. Tesla started production with approximately 1,000 workers. I really am a big believer in, in, in manufacturing. I like it personally. I think it's sometimes people think of it as, as kind of you're just making copies and it's, but, but actually there's an enormous amount of, of innovation and engineering uh, that, that goes into uh, making a large quantity of something put, you know, perfectly every time. And then having, having that close interaction of uh, engineering uh, and, and production, I think is also extremely important because we want to drive but really stay at the forefront of, of uh, innovation as far as uh, electric vehicles are concerned and continue to serve as a catalyst for the transition to a sustainable uh, energy future. Well, uh, we have a, a, a very big sign. Um, <laughs> and we're going to raise the curtain on the sign. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's great. 
Yeah, I get a chill. Yeah. Actually, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike Roadster, Model S was a true Tesla vehicle from the ground up. Every aspect of the car was intentional, and it thereby offered Tesla a way to redefine what a car was. Elon Musk debuted the beta vehicle to the world on October 1, 2011, driving on stage with a car packed with passengers at an event at the Tesla factory in front of nearly 3,000 reservation holders and guests. Set to come out the following year, Tesla showed off the fit, finish and performance of the production Model S with special features, from the revolutionary 17-inch touchscreen to the massive panoramic roof and voice command audio system. Enthusiastic customers got to experience their future car for the first time and were thrilled by the acceleration, handling, and premium interior. The factory was in full swing, with press, welding, and final assembly robots demonstrating what full-scale production would look like. In order for Tesla to have a future beyond being known as a niche luxury car maker, Model S had to be perfect. Model S got its roots from the idea of being not only the best electric car, but the best performance sedan in the marketplace. When you start with big, lofty, pillar ideas like that, you have to really reassess the entire car from the ground up. We are doing what people don't think can be done with a car. We're taking something that's been done the same way for a hundred years and we're taking it 10, 20, 30 years into the future. The architecture of Model S is absolutely unique. There's no car out there that's really designed around an electric powertrain, around a battery pack in the floor, and around the motor and gearbox between the rear wheels. When you take the battery and you put it at the lowest point possible between the four tires, that gives it a handling characteristic you just can't get with another type of vehicle. And because the center of gravity is so low in the car, it wants to stay stable. It's another advantage that you can't understand until you get behind the wheel and hit the accelerator. Model S is going to be the best car, the best sedan on the planet. That doesn't happen by chance. That's a target that you aim for, and we collectively have all aimed to produce the absolute best sedan in the marketplace, and we have.